Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm going to be painting follow the yellow brick road and I'm going to be sipping on my green tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, deep yellow, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, and fire red. And of course, you can switch those up if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil for some drawing, and then I have two brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, and I have a number seven round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well. And if you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using, from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and paper towel and pencil and all the other good stuff is in there. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna draw ourselves an outline of the feet and the skirt. I'm gonna be using my pencil. And I'm gonna guide you with markers. We are gonna connect the markers and hopefully by the time we're done, we have something that resembles a pair of feet with some slippers on it and a skirt looking down at it. <laughs> so I'm gonna use my pencil. I'm gonna give you these markers and then we'll just connect the markers and we'll be done. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to be, if this is about my halfway point and this is about quarter way between that and the bottom of my canvas. I'm down from that maybe about an inch or two. This is gonna be my first marker, somewhere in through here. This is gonna, we're gonna draw the skirt first. On the right hand side, I'm gonna be maybe a, just about the same height as this, maybe a little higher or lower, so somewhere in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw myself kind of a ripply type of skirt with the edge, but I'm gonna have a couple of markers that are gonna almost be the bend in the skirt. So I'm gonna come over to this right from here, maybe about an inch and a half or so, and go up about an inch. And then I'm gonna draw a line going down towards the bottom of my canvas, something like that. I'm gonna do the same thing at almost the, at the halfway mark in my canvas. So I'm gonna come over from here and travel over to the right, almost about halfway. If this is halfway left to right, I'm a little bit to the left of that, and then up about another inch. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna draw myself a line to the bottom, but I don't want it to be totally straight, so give it a little bit of a bend. And then I'm gonna do one more of these lines. It'll be, let's see, if this is about this high, we can come over to the right, at about the same height and stop maybe about four, three or four inches from the end of the canvas. And then you'll do the same thing over in through here. Just give yourself some sort of line. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect these markers with wavy type of lines. So I'm gonna start from here, give myself a wave there, start in through here, give myself a wave in through there. From here, oh, let's come down here maybe about, I would say, an inch, inch and a half, something like that. We'll do this, give ourselves another little wave in through here, and then come down here maybe about a quarter or a half of an inch and give yourself another wave in through there. So that's going to be the movement of our skirt. Now we're going to make a couple of ankle 
pieces or legs. <laughs> so I'm going to be in this um, section right here. I'm going to be right about in through here. So maybe about three or four inches in from the right and about three, four inches in from the left of this marker. And then I'm going to give myself a little bit of a diagonal mark. I'm not going much more than halfway up or down my canvas. So this is about halfway up or down my canvas. I'm a little bit higher than that. Um, not by much, but just a little bit. And when I do this, this is going to be wider than in through here. So I'm going to do the same thing over for this leg over here. I'm going to start right about um, where this corner is in through here. So somewhere in through here. And then I'm maybe about, I would say, three or four inches over to the left. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to give myself a diagonal type of line in through here and in through here. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as this one. Maybe the legs are positioned a little bit differently, so don't feel the need to make them exactly perfect. As long as it's wider here and more narrow here, and you don't travel up much higher than halfway up or down your canvas. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the shoe on. So I'm going to, if you're looking down at your feet, you'd probably see a little bit of your heel or the backside of your foot in through here. I'm going to have my feet kind of turned like this, like they're almost going two different ways a little bit. And they're, the feet or the toes are going to come really high up to close to the top of the canvas. So this particular foot in through here, I have the top of my shoe it's about maybe an inch or two over from the left of here and straight up maybe about an inch, inch and a half away from the top of my canvas. So somewhere in through there. So that's giving you the highest part and the lowest part. Now I'm just going to connect these with the shape of a shoe. <laughs> so you can use your own feet as reference. You can use um, just this type of oval type of shape that I'm using. I know that my feet, I've got my little, the parts of my the sides of my feet pop out a little bit, so I'll put, make that pop out a little bit. Maybe this is the arch of the foot a little bit in through here. So that'll be that shape. And then I need to put the um, where the foot meets the shoe in through here. So I'm going to come about half the distance between um, my ankle and my toes. So somewhere about here, this is going to be the top part of the opening of the shoe. And then I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a curved line in through here and then a curved line in through here. Just leaving a little sliver of the shoe over on the other side. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So the tip of my toe is going to be right about here. So again, this is maybe about an inch and a half to two inches away from the top of my canvas and if I was to travel straight down from here I'm a little about an inch to the right of this ankle in through here. So then I'm going to connect um, this to the bottom part where I'm going to put my my heel of sorts something like that. So I will connect this in through here. This is the inside part of my shoe or where my um, my arch of my foot is, and over on this side, if I was looking down, maybe I'll just see, this would have to travel like right about in through here, I would think, something like that. And then this is gonna travel up to the top of my tippy toe, so something like that. And then I'm gonna put the inside part where the foot meets the shoe. So again, about halfway between here and the top of your foot, somewhere in through here will give you that marker. And then I'll just kind of ride this along the edge so it looks like this part is going to be the, the part of the shoe. And then this will be the part of the foot. And then I'll do the same thing over on this side. And then you can make any little tweaks and adjustments that you want. That's all we're going to do for our outline. And then we're going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So you can put your pencil away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our road and our skirt. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are yellow, blue, black, and white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the road. I'm loading my brush with yellow paint, and I'm just going to paint it in. It does not have to be painted in in any specific brush stroke because we're going to be doing a second layer on top of it. So if you do some of it left to right and you do some of it vertical, it's going to be okay because you're going to be covering that when we get to the next step. You can bring it all the way to your pencil mark. And if you hit your pencil mark, 
that's all right too because you'll still be able to see through the paint and you'll be able to see your outline underneath it. So I'm just going for a nice coverage throughout the, um, throughout the area where the road is and I'm bringing it again right to my pencil mark and if you bump into that pencil mark there's no worries whatsoever. I'm just going to go left to right for most of the time I will probably be going left to right because I know that that's the way that the that the bricks are going to be laid but again it's really not that terribly important especially when you get to um, right next to the um, the other objects it's much easier to just kind of go with the with the direction of them especially when it doesn't really matter like right now when we get to doing the bricks it will matter a little bit more but right now we just need to get this yellow on so it provides us with a great base for our yellow brick road <laughs> and again I'm just kind of bringing this all the way down and then when I go to do my skirt and again if you get it in your skirt or in your legs and all that good stuff it's okay I'd rather you overlap lap into your other sections than to actually miss some areas so fe don't fear bumping into your lines because that's going to give you better coverage around the whole painting so if you know even if you're going towards that skirt and you're like oh my god I went too much into it it's okay because we'll be able to paint over that that's easier to paint over than to try and fill a blank spot later on um, through the painting process so Go right ahead and bump into those neighboring objects. It'll make your painting process easier too. <laughs> so you don't have to be so concerned about getting each area perfect. And then once we've got this done, I'm gonna wash and dry this large brush so I can do the base coat for the skirt. So the skirt is gonna be kind of like a country blue color, a nice soft, un unsaturated type of blue so I'm gonna actually take my ultramarine blue and add black and white to it or add gray to it so I'm gonna wash and dry my brush right now and what I'm gonna do is I am going to be taking my ultramarine blue and I'm gonna add a little bit of black and some white into it this is about the color that I'm going through for in through here so what I did was I'm gonna take a little bit of black and a good amount of white. The white will definitely, I want it to be a, a pretty light shade of this country blue type of color. Um, so I used a good amount of white. I'll probably add a little bit more in through here because this is a little bit too dark for me, but I'm just kind of spinning the colors around. Gonna add a little bit more white paint in through here. And yours doesn't have to be exactly the same color as mine. I'm just going for something that is reminiscent to Dorothy's dress. So <laughs> she had a light blue dress on with some checkers on it, a checkered type of pattern. So we're just going for something that resembles that. Um, you could certainly make yours a different shade of blue or make it gray or, you know, purple, whatever you'd like to, to do. I'm just going for something that is resembling the original skirt that is iconic in my head. <laughs> so I've got my light blue going on in through here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to color in my skirt. So I know that I have these lines that I already had um, created. So what I'm gonna do, I don't necessarily wanna lose that line altogether. So I'm gonna leave myself just, I'm gonna bring my paint right up to the line, but I'll also leave myself the hint of a little bit of space between the two, just so I don't lose that line. I know that this blue is a really good covering blue because we added um, black and white to it, so it has good opacity, which means you can't really see through it. So in order for me to not lose that original line that I had, I'm just gonna leave a little bit of space in between. So that way, as I go through my painting process, I, and just where they touch each other, so like these two blue sections will touch each other. So something like that, just again, so I don't lose that information as I'm going through my painting process because I'm gonna want to uh, account for that later. And then I'm just bringing this all the way to the edges. And again, we'll be doing another step to this skirt. Well, actually we're gonna do like two more steps to the skirt, but 
um, as far as covering purposes and getting this to be a perfect coverage at this point it doesn't need to be perfect you're just really going for a nice base coat on here and if it's if it's perfect great if not no worries because we're gonna have that second layer on top of it later and then once you've got this step all nice and done we're gonna be switching to our small brush for the next step so just making sure that I leave myself a little bit of a visual space between these sections and then making sure I have good coverage and then I will take this brush, put it away, take out my um, small brush for the next step and just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our socks, our shoes and our ankles or our legs. I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are red, my country blue, and I'll be using yellow, brown, red, and white for my skin tone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first put my socks on. <laughs> so put my socks on. So I'm gonna use my country blue, and this is gonna be this whole area in through here, but we gotta tell the sock where to stop. And Dorothy was wearing some like low kind of, I don't know, like bobby slouchy kind of socks. So these short kind of ankle socks. So I'm gonna stop, stop it somewhere in through here, but I'm going to give it a curve. So that way it shows that the, the leg is curved as well. And same thing with where I had her little ankle coming into the foot part. I'm going to leave myself that, um, that visual line between those two sections. So right here and here, just so I can kind of have that understanding when I go to do my, um, my foot details in a little while I'll know where that kind of ankle makes its way into into the foot itself and if you lose that line don't worry I'll show you how to kind of um, understand where it is when we go to paint the the details on the foot so or where the sock part is on the foot so I'm just kind of bringing this down in through here and just coloring it in it doesn't have to be a perfect blend or anything like that and then I'll do the same thing on this side I'm going to give my sock its edge somewhere in through here and your sock doesn't have to end exactly where mine does it can certainly end you know somewhere different you maybe yours is a little bit more wrinkly and has more more to it than mine does but Mine's, I think her socks were pretty tight to her feet. They weren't, they weren't really puffy socks. I like puffy socks for cozing up on a winter day on the couch, but hers were not that puffy. So again, I'm just gonna leave myself this little bit of a visual spot between the ankle and the foot, and then just color this whole part in with my, with my soft blue color. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush because we're gonna be painting the base coat of the shoe next, and that's gonna be with um, red paint. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush, and I'm just gonna be painting in my shoes with red paint. So this is gonna be a great base coat for them. The, um, the areas down by the where it's gonna meet the feet, I'm just gonna do little slivers of the color right along that sock area. And if you feel that you need to reshape your, you know, the exterior form of the, or shape of the shoe, feel free to do so. This is gonna be one of those things that once you see the redness, you'll be like, oh, I want it to bump out a little bit more here, or, you know, you can certainly reshape it into whatever, whatever, it, you feel is is believable. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of a sliver down the sides of the shoes. And if you're kind of doing this on the, you know, with your own references, you can certainly, you know, whip out your camera and take a picture of your feet <laughs> as you're looking down at them. That can really help to give you the idea of what happens to the shoes and of course they're all going to be at different angles and you know lighting has you know stuff to do with it and whatever angle your foot is at has some stuff to do with it but you can really get the general gist of how to make these lines and how to um, leave a lot of space up top or a little space down below just by kind of using your own 
whatever references are at your disposal and you have a pair of feet so you can certainly use your own feet as as reference as you go through this process and this is where I'm bringing my red all the way to my pencil mark and making sure that I have it or all the way to my yellow so that way I'm covering up that pencil mark and if you can still see a little bit of your pencil after you get done with this step that's okay too because we have another layer that's going to happen on these shoes so and on the road so you know we're not at the we need to be perfect stage yet so just kind of get this paint on here and again you don't need to do any special brush strokes just kind of get it on in a nice um a nice even coat if you can but if you have some streaks and stuff like that that's all quite all right because you've got that other layer coming on and then what I'm going to do for my um, ankle or my leg portion that's showing is I'm going to create a skin tone I'll be using red yellow white and brown for that skin tone itself so because I already have red on my brush, I don't need to wash my brush, and I've already magically kind of pre-mixed myself a skin tone, but I'll show you how I got there. So I used my red, and then I used yellow, so about equal parts of red and yellow, and then a little bit of brown, and then some white. So what this will do is it's gonna give you a nice natural skin tone, and you can certainly, once you start mixing it together, you can see if it's too dark or if it's too light, you can adjust it whatever way works for you. That's a little bit too dark for me. I know it's gonna get a little bit darker as it dries, so I'm gonna add a little bit more white to this. And then once you've got it in, yeah, there we go. That's, that's getting in the vicinity that I'm looking for. You can always utilize your own skin as a visual reference. Um, and once you do this, if it doesn't turn out the way that you thought it would, that's okay because we're doing another step to the skin. <laughs> so I've got my skin tone in through here and I'm just gonna color the entire leg portion that's remaining with this skin tone. And again, not concerned if it's a perfect coverage because this is just gonna act as the base coat. I'm just using a nice flat tone right now so we can get the, um, the beginning layer of the skin on. And then I'll do this leg, bringing it all the way to my sock, all the way to my chalk mark, and all the way to the skirt, and then doing the same thing over on this side. So again, not, no fancy brush stroke, just kind of getting it on there. And then once you've got these colored in, we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So I'm gonna bring this all the way down in through here and over into here and bring it all the way to my sock. So once again, once I get this done, I will put this small brush away, take out my large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put the highlights and shadows on the skirt fabric. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are my country blue, black and white. And what I'm in essence gonna do is put highlights in the part of the fabric that bumps out the most to the viewer and shadows in the part that's, that dips in the most. So I'm gonna start with my shadowy areas first and how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with black and blue, my dusty blue on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna do this one in through here because this will be a nice big area that you can see. So I'm gonna put both of those colors in this little dip area in through here. And then what I do is I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel like that. And I'm gonna pick up more of my blue and I'm gonna get it to blend out towards this um, lighter area. So you can manipulate it so it looks like it's kind of coming up that that um, the piece of fabric in this direction or you can do it just kind of like in a light stripe type of fashion and then I'm just going to kind of blend it out with that blue paint so it blends into that 
um, main color in through here. And if you end up having a little bit too much black on your brush and it ends up being a little bit darker than you had anticipated, don't worry, because in a second we'll, we're gonna put a little bit of a highlight on this area as well. And then I just kind of blend it out a little bit. And this is one of those steps that you don't really need a ton of paint on your brush. So when you go to do the next section, I'm gonna do this one over here. I have very, a teeny tiny bit of black on my brush and a teeny tiny bit of blue because it's a smaller section. And I'm gonna go right in this area here and this is where I'm gonna to start to get rid of that, um, that line that I kind of preserved so I could see where, those, where the difference between those two pieces of fabric were. This one's gonna be kind of all um, kind of out towards the viewer. I think I'll have a little bit of a shadowy area in through here. So I didn't even uh, add any more paint to my brush. I just am um, using the remnants on my brush to give myself a little bit of dip in on that particular part of the um, fabric. And then over on this side too, if you feel like you've got enough paint on your brush to just kind of do this without adding more paint on your brush, that's totally fine. I'm gonna wipe my brush off, pick up some more of my um, original blue just to get this to blend in a little bit. And then once I've got those shadowy areas on there, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna put my highlights on. So I'm actually gonna wash and dry my brush just so in case I had a lot of that black on my brush, I wash it off so that way I'm not starting with um, too much of that on my brush. And wherever I want that fabric to pop out, that's where I'm gonna be putting white and my um, country blue or my dusty blue. So this is where I want this one to pop out a lot. So I'm gonna put that white plus the blue on here. So what I'm really doing is adding these varying shades or tones of this blue. So I'm adding it lighter where I want it to pop out and darker where I want it to recede. And then I'm just gonna get them all to kind of blend in with one another. So I can utilize my brush to help me in that process. And again, you can go curved or up and down, whatever is kind of um, easiest for you. Sometimes we, as we develop our painting style, sometimes we have a preference as to what direction we like to put the, put the paint strokes in. But on this particular one, what I'm really just looking for is a nice blend. So it doesn't really matter the, the direction I'm putting my brush strokes in as long as I can kind of get those, those areas to blend in with one another and make it look like it, like it makes sense. And it, you can certainly use the directional brush stroke to tell you know what way that fabric is bending. I'm again going to put white with a little bit of my base color blue on my brush in order to get this area right in through here to pop out the most. And of course you can, if you run into a, a place where it's like, oh, you know, it's not drying on me fast enough and I'm not getting them to um, blend in the way that I want, you can always let it dry and come back with another layer on top of it. So don't feel like if you didn't get the perfect blend that you're doing something wrong because sometimes this type of process, if you haven't done it before, it might take you a couple of times to, to get used to how to you know, get them to blend in with one another. You might end up wanting yours to be lighter or darker or have a little bit more movement to it. So it might take a couple of um, tries to get it to do that. And so if you need to, just let it dry, come back and do another layer on top of it. It's looking pretty, pretty good for me in through here. And I also know that I'm gonna be having a nice pattern on top of this, um, on top of this skirt. So if, if there comes a point where I, you know, I feel that it hasn't blended totally the way that I wanted to. I know that I'm going to be having a pattern on top of it. So that's going to help to disguise anything that might not have gone exactly the way that I had planned it to go. And then you can fiddle with yours as much as you want. We are going to be using um, our, we're going to use this large brush for the next step. So once you've got your skirt nice, all of the highlights and shadows on the fabric, you can put this large brush away. Or no, we're going to use this large, just wash and dry this large brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our brick road. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, yellow, and white. And what I'm gonna be, in essence, doing is making some really dark lines in between the bricks themselves 
and then we'll be adding a little bit of a highlight on top of the bricks to make them look a little bit three-dimensional. So I'm going to be doing my dark kind of grout lines in between those bricks with brown and a touch of black paint. So I'm going to give a good amount of brown on my brush and just a teeny bit of black paint. I don't need much and what I like to do is I'm going to kind of squish it on the side of my palette and just kind of rub it off because I don't need a lot of paint on my brush and if you're fearing the amount of paint on your brush you can always just wipe it off on your paper towel as well. So I'm going to have my first row of bricks is going to be really close to the top of my canvas. So I'm going to mark my edges where I want um, each row of bricks to be. So I'm going to come down about a half of an inch, make myself a mark there, and about half of an inch down there. Then each row of bricks for me is going to be about two and a half inches in between. So I'm just going to kind of give myself a little bit of a marker, about two and a half inches. You could, after you make that first marker underneath here, you could use your brush or a ruler and kind of measure how far you did that and then just go and do subsequent marks that are about the same um, distance. They don't all have to be exactly the same and <laughs> they don't have to be two and a half inches. You can really have fun with um, the way that you want them to be, but that's about the distance that I'm having mine go. So I'll do this and then just kind of give myself a little bit of a marker somewhere in through there. And then what I'm gonna do without washing my brush, I'm going to be connecting those lines. I'm using my brush in the horizontal way as opposed to this vertical way. So I'm holding my brush like this as I go to connect these. And I'm gonna be doing a, a loose kind of sketcherly line to connect these two markers. If you feel like you're running out of paint and you're really not going a, able to go much farther, then definitely reload your brush with a little bit of black and brown. And as I'm doing this, I'm keeping my eye on the prize, which is the next dot. So that way my eye and my hand kind of travel together and that will give me better success to getting to that um, to that next marker with more of a straight line. And you can bump right into your shoes if you want to because we're gonna be adding a whole bunch of information onto those as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my next one in through here. And then again, just kind of keeping my eye on the prize. I need to reload my brush. And when I reload my brush, I am kind of more heavily on the brown side as opposed to the black side of what's on my brush so that way I can, uh, the brown to me is kind of a safer bet and I can always add more of the brown, um, the black, or add, add more to make it darker, but it's tough to back the black off if you've made the black too, too much. And then again, just kind of connecting these so they look like they make sense. And these are just soft lines so that it looks like the, there's dirt in there and we've got, you know, those, those lines, those mortar lines in between the, the bricks, something like this. And of course you can bump into your skirt and if you need to do any corrections to that later, you can certainly do that. So now that I've got the horizontal lines, now I need my vertical lines. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna, you can off center yours if you want, but for me, kind of using the center of my canvas is gonna be a pretty safe place to go. So I'm gonna start kind of in the center of my canvas and I'm gonna do these vertical, these soft vertical lines every other brick, something like this. And again, just really loose and gentle with my, with my brush. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, on the, on the um, edges of the, of the one that I just did, I'm gonna come about maybe about an inch or inch and a half away from the edge of my canvas and do the same thing. So skip a brick, bring it down, skip a brick, bring it down, skip a brick, and do the same thing over on here. So again, I'm on this same line right in through here. And you might have a different number of rows than I do. So whatever is, you know, you, whatever your count is, is totally fine. And then I'm gonna go between these two, somewhere in through here, and make myself a line on the opposing row of bricks. So this is gonna be between here. I can't see it here. I'd skip a brick, I can see it here. So this is where I put it on this one. Um, so here, I can't, I, it's not on this brick, it would be on this brick, her foot is in the way. It would not be on this brick and then it would be on this brick right in through here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush because I have all of my lines in place. 
I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put my highlights on my bricks. So this is going to be predominantly white with a little bit of yellow. So I washed and dried my brush. I'm going to start with a little bit of white on my brush. And this is where um, you're going to want to kind of get rid of any of your extra lines or uh, make sure that that paint is going in the right the correct direction so I'm just going left to right and it's okay if you bump into your leg or the sides of the bricks I'm going to use pick up a little bit of yellow right now so throughout this process I will be alternating between white and yellow and I want to make sure that I bring this all the way to the feet I don't want it to look like I've painted around those feet like I don't want there to be a firm yellow line around them so I'm just concentrating and making sure that I bring that whatever that highlight is I can bring it into a, the whole brick and in a kind of a soft manner so it looks like it's just being spread around the whole thing but bumping into that foot so that way I don't have that unpainted area around it. I put the highlight on then I pick up a little bit of yellow to get it to rub in and you might want your highlights to be really really vibrant. You might want there to look like there's a bunch of sunshine all over your bricks. However bright you want these to be is totally fine and again I'm just kind of adding this this lightness so they look like they've got some sunshine on them and that they are definitely have some dimension to them and just by utilizing this white and just kind of rubbing it in in a non-systematic way that really helps to make it look much more realistic than if we were just to have a flat color of yellow and if you make it too white you just add some yellow back to it it doesn't have to be uh, you know any specific um, shade of yellow or white but sometimes when we're doing this we tend to you know the paint can get away from us and sometimes it'll end up too yellow or too too white so you just kind of keep adjusting it until you feel like you've reached whatever tonal value that you want for your highlights and your and your shadows and the white is of course just making that brick pop out even more from those little mortar or grout marks and I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just kind of making sure that I rub it in and just making sure that I've got some you know some believable highlights to it so it's not too much and making sure that I it goes all the way up to that foot so we don't lose any of that dimension on the foot and make and so it doesn't look like we're painting around the foot and then you can just fiddle with this all you want if you need to add some more grout marks in in between or mortar marks you certainly could if you felt like you know this this process of the highlights took away from it you could certainly add some of that back and then we are going to be utilizing our small or yeah our small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put this large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the pattern on our skirt and we're going to finish our sock areas so i'm going to be using my small brush the colors i'm using are my country blue black and white and how I'm going to do this first I'm going to just do my pattern on my skirt so I'm just giving a very loose interpretation of a checkered type of pattern so I'm going to be using my white and my country blue as well because I don't want this to be too in your face I don't want it to be too overwhelming I just really want it to be a, a very loose rendition you can also utilize a little water on your brush as well so if you if you're using heavy body paint or you're going through this process and you, you want a little bit more fluidity just dip your brush in your water cup and then just tap it on your paper towel so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have horizontal lines that are taking on the movement of the skirt and then we'll do some vertical lines so i'll start with this one in here first because this is gonna be the probably the one that has the most movement to it and once I get them on there you'll see I, I end up going a little bit faster but um, to get them started I'm really just kind of starting over on one side and just kind of giving them this loose type of striped look that's taking on whatever the curve that I feel is of that skirt which may kind of 
change as you go up the skirt or you know along the sides of the skirt so just feel free to explore whatever wherever whatever direction you feel that that um, the movement of the skirt is and it'll be kind of dictated by the bend or the highlight in the shadow so the highlight would probably come out and have this um, like top-sided kind of curve to it and then as it dips back under it might it might have a downward curve to it so something like this and again a little bit of water on your brush can help with making that ripple oops my hand is rippling on my on my canvas so the skirt's going to get a little extra ripple from whatever my hand is doing here that works and of course as the as you recede into the shadows or into the darkness it might get a little bit um, lighter or, or you might be able to see the stripe a little bit more or less depending on how much water or how much blue you've had on your brush so I'm really not terribly concerned about these all looking exactly the same I'm just again giving this nice loose interpretation of what's going to be a checkered type of pattern and then I'm going to go ahead and do the vertical um, lines on this one. I think this one would maybe go something, we'll put this one up like this, I guess, something like this. And then once I've got my vertical lines, now I can just do horizontal ones. So the horizontal ones will take a little bit of the shape of the skirt uh, of the fabric as well. And again, I've got some a little bit of water on my brush, so this way, these um the fluidity stays on my brush for a little while and i can get a lot of these lines to just kind of um, have this faint look to them and i can do quite a few of them in a row um, but if you if you're not able to get the um, fluidity that i have you can certainly again add a little bit of water to your brush or you can add liquid medium to um to your paint that will help to add this uh this little fluidity i think i want these ones on here just a, a little bit brighter on this curve in through here so it looks like it is um being highlighted by that part of the skirt as well so you can add stripes on the fly to add parts of this pattern on the fly if something's not translating as bold as you want it to you can certainly add additional ones as you go through the process you don't have to once once the vertical ones are done it doesn't mean you have to stop you can or horizontal you can certainly add more if needed and then as i go to my um my socks i'm going to be utilizing the same the same thought process with the um with the fluidity on my brush i want to do my ankle area is going to have some lightness to it I'm going to have some shadowy areas. So when we did the fabric on the skirt, we did our shadowy area where the fabric dipped in and our uh, our highlighted area where the fabric pump, bumped out, which is exactly what we're going to be doing on our socks, but in a much smaller version. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush, and I'm going to be picking up my soft dusty blue with a little bit of black paint on my brush. So I have black and blue on my brush. And I'm going to kind of be identifying where my ankles stop and then we'll put some shadows in. So if I was to just kind of travel down this leg and think about what my foot would do, I'm thinking my, my ankle would stop somewhere in this vicinity and then my foot would begin after that. So I just need to keep that in my head nice and clearly as I am creating um, these highlights and shadows, you know, where is my ankle stopping and where is the foot beginning? So this just gives me that initial visual and then I'm going to utilize those darker colors the black plus the blue to add shadow where I think shadow would be So I think shadow would be as my foot enters or as Dorothy's foot enters the shoe <laughs> Not my foot Dorothy's foot enters the shoe, but I always think of my myself when I'm doing stuff like this What, what would happen to my my foot? in this in this thought so i'm going to put that darkness as it's going into the shoe in through here and again my trick is utilizing the black plus the soft blue 
and if I need to, to get that paint to move around a little bit more, a little bit of water on my brush. So something like this is gonna get that area to recede into the side of the shoe. And I'll do the same thing on the other foot, but I think I also want a little bit of, um, maybe a little shadow in through here and maybe at the bottom of the sock in through there. I'm gonna do the same thing over on the right side. So black plus a little bit of my soft blue is gonna give me my shadowy area as the foot is entering into the shoe, something like this. And then maybe a little bit of water on my brush just to push it back into that little corner and get it to blend into the sock part itself. So a little bit of blue will help to help to do that. So just kind of getting that little shadow to go into there. I think I need a little bit on this side as well. So again, just a little bit of the, the black and the blue will get this um, area to kind of dip right into the shoe and make it look a little bit more natural. And if you feel you want it to really sink in, a little bit more black will do the trick. So that's gonna be one of those preferences if you feel that you know, you're know you confident with the, with the deep darkness of that shadow, you can certainly go all the way black on that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to put the highlights on the, on the socks and on the ankle part and on the foot. So I'm just washing and drying my brush and this is where I'm gonna be utilizing my white. So I'll use white to start and then I will add in the, the blue to get it to um, blend in. So I'm gonna put a, a bright spot up at the top of my little sock in through here. And then as it goes down that ankle, I'm just gonna utilize this curved type of um, brush stroke, this directional brush stroke to tell the viewer that there is um, a shape or a form to this ankle in through here. So I'm gonna do the same thing over on the right hand side. Just while I have the thought in my head, sometimes it's easier to travel from one side to the other doing the same thought at the same time as opposed to, you know, continuing to move elsewhere on the foot. So I've got the white on my brush and I can just kind of make this ankle part of the sock appear with these curved lines in through here. And if I did it too white, I can certainly just bring back some of that um, blue. And if you want the sock to pop out a little bit more than the leg, you can certainly add a little bit of the blue and white on your brush and just kind of get that sock to almost like buckle out a little bit past the ankle itself. That'll give it a little bit more of a realistic look to it. Like it's a little bit puffy where it is um, meeting the, the, the skin itself. And then I'm gonna utilize that white paint to start and give myself the brightest part on the foot. So if, if Dorothy's shoes had a little bit of a heel on them, so the foot, in through here would be off the ground a little bit. So I think it would be highlighted the most in this area right in through here. And then it would get darker as it goes towards that toe. So this is where I'm gonna put my brightest highlight in through here. And then I wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm picking up some of that original blue and then I'll just get this to blend in a little bit. So the brighter part is going to tell the viewer that that is popped out the most um, or is closest to the viewer. So again, wiping my brush off, going to the other foot, putting my brightest part right in through here because I feel like that would be closest to the viewer and the viewer is us, <laughs> the, the point of view of Dorothy right now. And then I can just blend it out with some of that, um, that original blue into those shadowed areas. And then you can fiddle with this, tweak it all you want. If you feel like you need a little bit more highlight on the edge of your sock, go ahead and do that. Um, maybe let it dry, see if you need another coat anywhere. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the skin portion of the legs. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are my skin color, white, brown, 
and that might be it. Maybe a little black too if I need for my shadows. So really all I'm looking to do is give some form to these legs and how I'm going to do that is I'm going to make the part that pops out the most to the viewer the lightest and then the part that's going to recede from the viewer darker. So I'm really just going to go for light here and dark along the sides and get them to blend in a little bit. We'll be putting shadow from the skirt on them later. Right now we're just going for the form of them. I will probably put a tiny bit of a shadow um, between the sock and the leg just because it'll be a little tiny detail that I can do right now. But first I'm just going to put the form on there. So I am going to start with brown paint on my brush and I'm going to give myself a shadow or contour shadow on the left and on the right of the legs. So something like this, I'm just bringing down that line. And then what I'm going to do is while it's kind of still wet, I'm going to blend it right in to that main color of the skin. So if yours goes too light or too dark or you know you need a little bit of assistance in getting it to blend, you just pick up that original skin color and you can utilize that to get it to blend in. So having both of those colors wet at the same time will allow you to get them to blend in with one another. So I'm just getting this side to blend and then I'm going to do make sure that the other side is blended pretty well, which the other side worked out pretty, pretty good. And then I'm going to put that tiny bit of shadow with brown right. I'm just putting a really tiny line in between that sock and the pieces and the skin. And this is just going to give that viewer the information that that sock has a little bit of um, height to it. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other leg. So just brown paint to start giving myself this um, dark area on the left hand side. You can get it to blend while it's wet if you want to before you do the other side, whatever is easier for you. And then I'll go ahead and do the other side. So putting my brown paint on, just bringing it all the way to that skirt and then getting it to blend in with the regular skin tone and again if you needed to you can pick up some of that regular skin tone to get it to blend but if it blended nicely on you no need to no need to pick it up then I'm picking up a little bit more brown to give this little tiny um, dark line underneath that sock as it's meeting the leg now what I'm going to do I'm washing and drying my brush and I'm going in for the highlighted area which is the area that is closest to the viewer so I'm going to be picking up uh, white paint to start. So I've just white paint on my brush and I'm going to give myself this light area on the top side of that um, leg, wiping my brush off so I don't have too much paint on it and then just going to get this to blend in. This section could be wider as it comes up that leg, um, especially if the leg just widens as it comes up. Now I'm picking up some of the skin tone to just make sure that it blends in. And again, this is one of those steps if you if you don't have a lot of practice or you know blending, it might take you a couple of times to get this to do what you want it to do, but or you know a couple of different layers involved. So you know don't feel that if you didn't get it on the first shot that that it's over with because <laughs> that's not true. You just kind of keep working it until you get that blend in the way that you want and you know you keep going lighter or keep adding more of the skin tone. It's just a process that sometimes takes a couple of tries to get it to, to do exactly what you want it to do. Then I'm going to move over to the other side. So I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel picking up some of that white paint so I can get this lighter area to start to emerge. I think I need a little bit more paint than that. Sometimes being too cautious is, you know, being too cautious and you need to add more paint, but that's okay. I'd rather be too cautious than to regret my, my paint quantity decisions. And now I just wipe my brush off. I'm picking up some of that original skin tone so we can just get these two areas to talk to one another. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your, your legs with all the dimension on them that you want, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish Dorothy's slippers or her shoes. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are red, white, black, and I'm gonna also use some of my skin tone color as well, or that tan that we created for the skin. So I'm gonna use my small brush. What I'm gonna in essence do is I'm gonna put my shape of my bows in place first and then we'll work our way around that. So I'm gonna do that with my skin tone. So this tan type of color that we've created, it's kind of like peachy tan, nice reminiscent of kind of a light color of red. And these bows were right kind of at the bottom portion of this um, section of the, of the shoe. So I'm gonna be creating the shape of them with polka dots. So I'm gonna do a square for this center part like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do um, just this pointy type of bow that goes up a little bit on towards the top and then comes down. It kind of rides right along the edge of the shoe in through here. So again, just kind of bring this up in a diagonal type of polka dotted way. I'm gonna bring this down in kind of a horizontal way and then right down to the um, base of the shoe and just kind of make my little polka dots in through here along the edge. And I'll do the same thing for the other shoe. So I'm gonna put a little square type of section for the middle part of the bow like this and just polka dots. They can be random polka dots. They don't have to be anything super special. Gonna put the corner up in through there and then just kind of polka dot my way down this side as well, bringing it all the way down to the edge of the shoe, and then just a row of little chaotic polka dots. I'll do the same thing over on this side, something like that. Gonna do this top area. And then what I'm gonna do next is, I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm gonna be utilizing this color for a couple of highlighted um, sparkly parts of the shoe. We're gonna be utilizing many different tones of sparkles within these shoes. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just kind of adding a few lighter areas. You can r just randomly pick some spots, put a couple of those colors within them. I'm gonna do the same thing over on this shoe. So I'm just randomly kind of picking some spots, even in the areas that your white came over or your brown came over. We're gonna have so many little sparkles on these shoes that you're not gonna notice that by the time we're done. So now that I've got that color of sparkles all along, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna be making a dark red color. So the dark red color is going to allow for the bright red to pop out when we go and make um, those sparkly, those more sparkly pieces. So I'm using my red and I'm gonna put just a teeny tiny bit of black in it and just pre-mix myself a dark red color. So this, will, like a maroon kind of color. This is going to be the kind of the key to making these shoes look very sparkly because we need to have some dark areas in order for those bright red sparkles to show up, to, to make them really look evident. So I know that this is gonna get a tiny bit darker as it dries, so I wanna make sure that I don't bring it all the way black, but I will leave room for, um, a little, little water just rolled down there, um, I will leave room for it for another layer of black as well. So that's about as dark as I'm going. And now what I'm gonna do with my dark red is I'm gonna put a whole bunch of it all over these um, shoes. But I need to make sure that I leave some of that original red showing because we will not be able to get that red as bright again if we cover it all up. So I'm making sure that I leave some of that original red showing. I can bring this dark red in as many areas as I want. I can bring it along these sides, but again, making sure that I leave some of that original red showing because that original red will be very hard to reproduce if you go over all of it. So I'm just cautiously applying my dark red, but I do want a lot of the dark red too. So I'm not afraid of it. I just wanna make sure that I continue to leave some of that original red. I am gonna put a lot of darkness around the bow 
itself so that way the bow will pop out to the viewer. The more contrast in the colors you have around that bow, the more it's going to pop out to the viewer. So again, just I've got this dark red on my brush and I'm just kind of randomly dotting it along the edges of the shoe. I'll put a whole bunch up on the top of the shoe as well. And again, you don't have to do all of it. Um, I and and I encourage you to not be really systematic. Just randomly kind of put these dark dots on here, making you know maybe you have some clusters in some areas. Maybe you have some areas that have a lot of the red still showing. We are going to do one more thing for the darkness, which will be with some black in a minute. But right now, I'm just concentrating on my dark red. And these are meant to look like sequins type of um, beaded sparkly thing. So if the edge of your shoe gets a little ruffled because of, you, because of your dots, that's okay too. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go and do the same thing over on the right side. So I've got my dark red on my brush. Gonna dot a lot within my, within my bow and on the outside of my bow. So that bow edge will pop right out provided I've got that nice darkness along the edges. And again, I'm making sure that I don't overdo this so I don't, so I continue to leave some of that original red showing. And these don't have to be perfect polka dots. I'm really just kind of dabbing the edge of my brush to give me this randomness with the with these darker shades of red so it looks nice and natural. You can put you know, a little bit of extra here or a little bit of extra there, whatever. It, again, is visually working for you. And then I'm just gonna kind of randomly go ahead and do the tippy top. I'm keeping those some of those lighter dots that we had done. I'm allowing those to just kind of stay. But if I bump into any of them or, you know, cover up any of them, I'm all, I'm all right with that as well. Just kind of be trying to be random because that's what's going to be the, the essence of these sparkles is to just have their own, you know, twinkle to them. So now that I've got the, the dark red, I'm going to pick up a touch of black without washing my brush. So just picking up a touch of black and this is going to add even more deep dark tones. So again, the darker some of these areas are, the more um, dimension that will be seen on these shoes. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this darkness right underneath at the bottom edge in through here just so that it looks like there's some nice dimension to the sparkly area in through here. I'm gonna put a couple of these black dots along the edge or the exterior of that bow so that bow can really really pop out and I don't need to do it in a in a straight line I'm really just kind of dotting my way through this so that way um, it resembles the sparkles but if you felt that you wanted yours to be really systemat systematic you could certainly do that as well making sure I've got some of the darkness everywhere so you know just randomly pick a couple of spots where you want that super darkness to be and again this is just going to be dark um, sparkles so depending on how they're catching the light they might have that little bit of darkness to them but again I can utilize that darkness to um, accentuate this bow as well so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side so utilizing the black on my brush but I'm doing less black dots than I did the dark red dots. So the black is really just kind of um, amping up the, um, the contrast in these colors, not so much so that everything reads as black, but enough to say, okay, well, the bow is now really popping out because there's some good contrast on the edges of it. Um, and oops, she's gonna have some red in her foot too. <laughs> Hold on one second, a little bit of water can, um, Get rid of that in a heartbeat if you if you catch it fast enough. I must have had some on my hand, which is no surprise to me. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and add some more of these black dots randomly throughout the, the rest of the shoe, trying to keep my wet hand away from anything. It's, it's dangerous sometimes, especially when you have such a, um, a light background or a vibrant background like this. 
uh, with these high contrasting colors. So it's it's dangerous. It's a dangerous painting experience <laughs> if there ever was such a thing. And then I'm just going to kind of dot some of this darkness. And then uh, the next color I'm going for is going to be red. So once I've got some of these black dots on here, I will wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to go in for some red. So I know we already have red on here. But I want to make sure my red is as red as red can be. <laughs> so I just washed and dried my brush. I'm picking up some red paint and just making sure that I've got everywhere that I want to have, you know, that vibrant red, just making sure it's as red as it can be. I don't really need to do much uh, with the red because, again, that was our base coat. But if you have some white areas that you kind of missed along the way, you can certainly utilize that red to, to amp that up. Then we're going for the magic sparkles of white. So I'm washing and drying my brush right now and I'm going to be using white paint to give myself those special little tiny sparkles. So when you're doing the white sparkles, my trick is I don't do too, too many of them. I just want to make sure that I have that luminescent value in here. So I'm just going to kind of add just a few strategic ones just to give that little that little bit of extra sparkle to make sure the viewer understands that this is a really, you know, sparkly kind of of shoe. You can have some bright bright ones. You can even take it and like give it a little starburst. So I'm going to give a couple of little starbursts maybe on the corner of this bow. So give it a little dot in the center and then just kind of pull out the, the brightness of that, of that twinkle. Maybe I'll put another little one on this toe area. So just wherever you want something to look like it's extra shiny, just give it that, that starburst effect. And if, the, if you want any of your other paint or any of the other sparkles to be lighter, you could always pick up white with a touch of red on your brush and you could give another variation of that, of that red. So you could have like a little bit of a pinky type of tone. So just play with the, the intensities of those, just making sure that you can see everything that you want to see. If you've got to amp up your brightness or your darkness to get that bow to pop out, feel free to do so. If you want a couple of little extra bright sparkles along the side of the shoe to make it look like it's being illuminated, feel free to do so. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over on this side. So a little bit of white on my brush to give myself these extra little sparkles along the way, especially around the edge of that bow. Again, that's, you know, intermingle that with that um, skin tone that we used. This is what's going to make it, again, just kind of pop out and be its own, its own thing. And then I'll get a couple of strategic little sparkles. And the sparkles don't have to be just in the red areas. You can put them in the black areas. You can put them wherever you want to, wherever you're feeling like there should be a little extra sparkle in through there. Feel free to, to dot that white paint in there. And then I'm just gonna kind of give myself some couple extra ones in through here, maybe a couple down here. And then I'm gonna put a couple of starbursts. So I think I'm gonna have one of these starbursts maybe over on the side of the shoe. So we're just going to put a little dot in through there and then just pull out these little bright sparkles and they can come past the foot too. That's what's going to make it look, or in front of the sock, that's what's going to make it look nice and shiny and like it's got this beautiful bright burst to it. Maybe I'll put one up here. Well, let's go in through here, of course, trying to keep my hand out of the way as I do this. And I just kind of put that center on and then just kind of flick it out so you can certainly you know play with that all you want and then I'm thinking that's looking pretty good we have one or we're gonna do another step it's gonna be with this medium brush so once you've got your shoes all nice and sparkly you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting shadows on the yellow brick road and on her skin from her skirt. So this is just going to be a real subtle detail just to give it a little bit more dimensional aspect to it and to maybe tell the viewer that there's a light source of sorts somewhere. So I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are brown and black, but I'll probably be using a little bit of water as well because I want my shadows to be not overpowering. I just want them to be 
translucent and there, but not, not too much. So I'm going to put a little bit on the sides of my, my shoes, not necessarily towards the top, because again, I want the viewer to believe that the, the bottoms of the shoes are off the ground a little bit because of the heel that she's wearing. So I'll put a little bit of shadow underneath here. Her legs, in essence, are off the ground, so I wouldn't have a shadow necessarily on the ground um, left to right. It would probably just be right below it. And then I'm going to have a shadow on the legs from the skirt, just a little bit, and then maybe a little bit of a shadow on the ground from the skirt from above. So I'm going to start with a very little bit of black and brown on my brush at the same time. And again, I want it to be pretty translucent, so that's why I'm using my brown. But if yours is not as translucent as mine is, you could certainly add a little bit of liquid medium or a touch of water to your paint. So again, I'm gonna do the bottom side of these um, shoes leading to her heel. So just a little bit in through here and maybe a touch over on this side in through here and then I'll do the same thing over on the other side. So just a touch of brown and a little bit of black just giving myself the illusion that this foot is off the ground just a little bit or the heel of it is off the ground just a little bit providing a touch of a shadow maybe a little bit on this side but maybe maybe not much at all. And then I'm going to I'm actually going to put a little bit of water on my brush because I want to do the ones on the legs, but I, I'm, I don't want to take away from the skin tone. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of water on my brush. I can always add more shadow. I don't want to lose my um, skin tone. So I'm going to just put this maybe about a half of an inch to an inch away from the skirt like this and just give myself travel around that leg and then just give myself a little bit of a transparent or translucent shadow in through here. You could always, because it is um, at the bottom of the skirt where it's meeting the leg, you could always make that a little bit, get my hand out of the way here, a little bit darker right as it meets the skirt, but you don't have to do anything really terribly exciting there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over on this leg. I'm going to get the shadow from this one in through here. So a little bit of watered down black and brown is on my brush right now. And then I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a translucent, transparent shadow in through there. Maybe a touch more black just to get a little bit more in this little crevice in through here. That'll give you um, a little bit more dimension. So that shadow is a little bit darker as it reaches the um the skirt itself and then if you needed to or felt that it if you you know wanted to add anything along the edges of those of the skirt if it wasn't finished or you felt like that would tell more to the story you could certainly do that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a shadow of the skirt on the ground itself so it's lifted off the ground so this would kind of be like a dissipated type of shadow underneath so i'm going to again just use that water a little bit of watered down black and brown on my small brush you could even use your bristle brush for this and then i'm just going to give myself a little bit of a shadow kind of just a dissipated one as if you know again the skirt is off the ground and this is just providing a, that bit of um bit of a shadow on the ground from underneath it. And again, if you needed to, you could add a little bit more water to your brush and that's going to allow you to um, get that translucency to it. So again, just a little bit down in through here and I'm just gonna get it to kind of dissipate as it moves a little bit away from um, the skirt. So it looks like the shadow is farther away from the object than the one that I did on the leg. So that's just a little bit of a trick to get it to look a little bit far, the, to get the shadow to look a little bit farther away is to get it to kind of just fade out and disappear or dissipate onto the surface that it is being cast upon. And then I got this little area over here. So again, just a little bit of that uh, watered down 
mixture, something like this, get it to kind of fade off into that ground, something like this. And if anything goes wrong, you're like, oh, I just did way too much. You can always just, if you can get it quick enough, you can always just use a little bit of water on your brush and almost scrub off that, um, that shadow, especially if the um, paint underneath it has dried enough. But I'm not really doing much, just kind of adding the illusion in through there. And then we have one little step left to go and it's gonna be with our small brush. So once you've got your shadows on here, make any little adjustments that you need and then um, wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically um, sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna use my small brush. I am gonna be signing mine in the bottom right and I am using white paint. So I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very magical, nostalgic image here, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.